Thank you for tuning in. My name is Cedric Balsma, Solution Architect in the European Data Center team. And today we'll be covering um, how policies, pools, templates, and service profiles all work together inside UCS Manager to create a very, very powerful blade solution. So one of the key things about UCS Manager is that it pays to spend time up front thinking about what you'd like to achieve, to think about the pools, the policies, and the templates. Because once you've done that, as you'll see at the end of this video, you can very, very rapidly deploy in a very consistent manner all sorts of service profiles. So the first thing we'll be looking at is connectivity. Um, connectivity from the blades. And we'll create templates for virtual NICs and virtual HBAs. Within UCS, there's always the concept of Fabric A and Fabric B, and we'll be creating VNICs dedicated for Fabric A and dedicated for Fabric B. So one of the first things you'll need is um, MAC addresses. So we'll create a pool of MAC addresses, again, a pool for Fabric A and a pool for Fabric B, so that the virtual NICs can actually pull out of that pool the MAC addresses they need. VLANs is the other thing we'll be creating. And in the VNIC templates, you can define which VLANs are associated with each VNIC. For the HBA side, we'll do the same thing, but now with worldwide port names and vSANs. On the policy side, there is most likely three policies that you'll be using. The QoS policy, the network control policy, and the pin group policy. So QoS applies to, to all the... Um, all the templates, the network control policy is Ethernet specific, and the pin group policy again applies to all the um, all the interfaces. So once we've done that, we can start to uh, to actually work on our service profile template. Now the service profile template needs a few things, and one of the things it'll need is it needs to know where to get the actual blades from. So there will be a pool of server blades. There will be a worldwide node name pool to, for it to pull an individual worldwide node name, and the same for the UUID. On the policy side, there will be um, a total of about five policies that most likely you'll be using. Boot policy is the first one. Do I boot from local disk? Do I boot from SAN? If I boot from SAN, where do I actually boot from? Those are things set up in the boot policy. There's a power control policy that was added in version 1.4. The firmware policy is where we define which BIOS version and which adapter firmware version needs to be running on the blade for this service profile template. And that's relevant because a blade set up for Oracle or SAP or Exchange or ESX could require different firmware versions. The BIOS policy is where we take the individual BIOS settings and make sure that on the blade they are set correctly for the service profile. And then there's the adapter policy that you'll be applying. And of course, um, we need to pick which of the connectivity options we would like to associate with the service profile. Once that's done, we can start rolling out service profiles. So let's take a look uh, about how the, some of these things would actually look if we were to see it through the UCS Manager GUI. So let's take a look at some of the pools. So what you're looking at here is the MAC pool. And in this case, what is highlighted is the MAC pool Lab MAC Pool A. And this is similar for the worldwide port names, the worldwide node names, or the UUIDs. In, th in this case, the pool is a name and then a range of MAC addresses. And of course, in worldwide port names, it will be a name and a range of worldwide port names. The QoS policy um, is, um, is very similar in a sense that I configure QoS at a global level to tell UCS which QoS settings are enabled for the entire system. After I've done that, I can now start to define policies. And of course, it only makes sense to create policies that are actually enabled in, in the system itself. In this case, in the middle, you'll see that I've created three QoS policies, TJ QoS Bronze, 
fiber channel and platinum. And on the right, you're looking at one of those uh, policies, the platinum policy. And um, the priority is set to platinum, which on the left you can see has an actual cost value of five. The line, it's line rate, um, that also implies I can limit the speed at which this runs if I want to. And the control is um, the host has no control, which means the UCS manager enforces this, um, this platinum QoS level. If we were to set it to full for the host control, that would imply that the host is responsible for setting the, um, the cost value and we would trust the host. In this case, we don't trust the host, we override whatever the host says. On the VNIC template, as an example here, um, you give it a name, um, you assign it to a fabric, fabric A or fabric B, and you have the option to enable failover for the individual virtual NIC. And then you tell it which Mac pool to use, QoS policy to use, network control policy, and ping group. And once you've done that, and you've done that through a range of virtual NICs and virtual HBAs, you end up with, um, with what you're looking at here, a, a number of connectivity options, a catalog of connectivity options that your service profiles can start to use. So at the service profile level, Let's start with looking at the BIOS. There are a lot of BIOS settings that you can actually set here. And there is a, a total of, uh, of nine different tabs that you can run through and set individual settings. So what you do if, um, if you want to change these um, from the defaults, you create a policy and then um, you set whatever you want to set and you assign it to the service profile. And the service, uh, the UCS manager will actually ensure that these settings are applied to the blade this service profile will eventually run on. We won't go into the, the pools on the left because they're basically very similar to the Mac pool that we've already seen. The service profile template itself, um, on the top right you can see that um, in my lab environment I've created four different service profile templates already. Um, and in the middle of the screen you'll see that we're at the storage tab, but there's a number of tabs you need to configure um, before actually ending up with a service profile template. On this storage tab, um, the worldwide no name is pool derived, which means we pulled it out of one of the available worldwide no name pools. Um, the boot policy, well, the boot policy is, um, is set to sand boot NetApp, um, which is one of the created boot policies. On the policy tab, there is the, the BIOS policy, which was the um, all those nine pages of BIOS settings that we've uh, that I've just shown you. The firmware policy is the version of BIOS and the version of the adapter firmware that is required for this service profile to run. And the power control policy can also be set here. So when that's all done, um, we can start to deploy service profiles. So let's see how that goes in the GUI. So what I do is I go to UCS Manager onto the Servers tab and I go and find my service profile templates and I've highlighted the template called Sandboot ESXi. You right click it and you select Create Service Profiles from Template. It asks you for a name and I've selected TJ underscore lab underscore ESX and I would like to have 10 of these service profiles. And as soon as you do that, the system will go out and create 10 service profiles and it'll sequentially number them one through 10. It'll tell you that they're successfully created. And what's happening now is that these service profiles will be associating themselves to blades and the blades will start to boot. And if the policy tells the blade to upgrade or downgrade the BIOS or change the BIOS settings, it'll do that as well. Um, and eventually the blades will, will come up as, uh, as ESX hosts. But creating these 10 service profiles didn't cost more than 10 seconds. And they're all created in an identical way, no, no e configuration errors, everything is built to, uh, to use policies 
tools and templates very, very efficiently. So that was a very, very quick run through of how policies, tools, templates, and service profiles all work together within UCS Manager. I hope you found this uh, useful. If you have any feedback, um, please share. It's, um, you can find my contact details on the right. Thank you very much for watching.